Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Um, okay, hi everyone. Um, so, I'm Matt. Um, and I'm going to talk today about Bayesian optimization in general and Bayesian approaches for black box optimization. But I'm going to focus on a method that we have developed recently that we call uh, predictive entropy search. And this is uh, mostly based on joint work with uh, Miguel Hernandez Lovato and Zubin. Um, and on the last side, I'll briefly slide. I'll briefly talk about some work that I've done with uh, Bobak Shahari. Um, OK. So w first off, what is black box optimization? So in this talk, primarily what I'm interested in is tackling problems where I have a function that I want to optimize, f. Um, but f itself is only given to me via a, what I'm calling a black box. Now what I mean by that is that um, I only have access to f pointwise. I can't necessarily even get gradients of f. And even when I evaluate f at some input x, what I'm going to get back is some y that is corrupted by noise. Um, the only requirement I'm going to make on f is that the expectation of, of this black box at, at my evaluation y um, is going to, the expectation of that is going to give me the function that I'm interested in. So from there, I can take this, I can evaluate a sequence of, uh, of x's, and then try and find the point that is the best point there. OK, so some applications of this are uh, a, a classical one that also comes from sort of the bandits literature is A-B testing. So where I have multiple configurations of, say, some website, um, the button size, the layout of the website. And what I'd like to do there is tune those parameters in order to find the best configuration. Possibly I could do this in an offline setting. Possibly I can do this in an online setting. Another example that, that we've looked at a lot is sort of hyperparameter tuning. So there, what I have is some algorithm. It could be a machine learning algorithm. It could be an algorithm for optimization, some other such setting. And I have these hyperparameters that are hard to tune. Now, this might be, let's say I have a neural network. Maybe I turn the, tune the neural network, um, and I, I do gradient descent to, to, uh, to actually fit that to some data. But then I have parameters like the um, the, uh, the depth of the neural network, the size of the layers, then I could use Bayesian optimization to tune those hyperparameters. Um, so now I'll, I'll give sort of a, a cartoon example of what Bayesian optimization looks like. So I'll start with some function that I have uh, illustrated here. Um, let's see, does this have... Ah, there we go. So I've illustrated this function here using this dashed line, and that's the function that I'd like to optimize. So there is some maximum that's, that's over here, but as we can see, there's sort of this periodic behavior and this sort of smooth sloping behavior here. So then what I'm going to do is get an initial sample of this function. So I never actually have access to the function itself. So after that, I have this initial sample, uh, I'm going to fit some sort of posterior model to the data that I've actually seen. And what's important here is that I'm fitting both my predictions and my uncertainty in those predictions. From there, I'm going to take this model that, that, that I, I have fit in some way, and I'm going to define some exploration strategy where this exploration strategy should, uh, should tell me, in some sense, where, to, where I should sample next in order to gain the most information about the optimizer of this function. So the next step is to take this, this function right here. I'm going to call it in the next couple sides, an, slides an acquisition function, to take this function and find the maximum of that. This is telling me again, where I should sample next. From there, I will take this point, I will evaluate that point, so actually get a sample from my black box. Um, and then I will add that back to my data set and update my model. So if we see here, 
Um, I've, I had some, a high degree of uncertainty there. I add a data point, and that lowers my uncertainty, although we see that it didn't really change my predictions much. Okay, so then I will uh, repeat this process over and over until either some convergence criteria or until I've reached a maximum number of iterations. Um, and so as you can see here, uh, this also is changing where I should sample next. Okay, so I repeat this process, and then I'm going to return some recommendation of what the best possible point is. So, okay, this is Bayesian optimization in a nutshell, but there are two sort of key points that, that we have to decide on to apply Bayesian optimization. That first point is, what sort of model do I use? So what is the, the prediction mechanism that I'm using? So essentially the first of, of these two uh, uh, graphs right here. And second, given that model, what is my exploration strategy? So what is the, the acquisition function that I'm going to use in order to uh, decide where to look next? Okay, so the, the, the first thing that, that I'm going to talk about, and this is about uh, the level of detail I'm going to give here, but is the type of model that I'm going to use. Um, and as I said before, there, there are two sort of in, important things that, that, that we need to make certain of. The first is the, the predictions that we're able to make, but almost more importantly, I need to have some measure of the uncertainty in my predictions. So for, for me, at least, this really suggests a, a Bayesian approach to this problem. And for the type of functions that I'm interested in optimizing, a, a really uh, a general and flexible prior for functions of this form is a Gaussian process. So I'm not going to go the, into this in, in really much more detail, but uh, definitely uh, take a look at the, the book of Carl to get more uh, information on Gaussian processes. Okay, so now I'll move on to, to sort of our contribution to this literature, and, the, and that's the type of acquisition function that we're using. So a, a common strategy in active learning, where the setting where we're actually interested in learning functions, um, is to, oops, sorry, is to select points which maximize the expected red reduction in posterior entropy. So here I'm interested in actually learning more about where my optimizer is. So the, the point x star. Well, since my function itself is unknown to me and I have a probability distribution over that function, that also means that I have a distribution over the location of the maximizer, x star. So what I can actually do is look at minimizing the entropy of this unknown maximizer, which will give me the maximum reduction in the posterior entropy. Okay? So that looks like this first equation right here. So this is just the entropy of x star given the current data set that I have. So this is just dt is just the set of x and y points that I have gathered up to step t. Now, this, this next uh, 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 part of the equation right here is just the expectation under y's, given a particular x, of the entropy of viewing that new point x. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm hallucinating a new point y conditioned on, on the input that, that I'm trying to evaluate here, x, and I'm adding that back into my data set and looking at the entropy that would result from viewing that new data point. However, one of the problems with this approach, and this pro approach is, is known as entropy search, and uh, Villamonte and Hennig and Schuler independently developed this method with various approximations. One of the problems here is that you can take this expectation relatively easily using Monte Carlo methods, but the distribution you have to construct, x star, condition on this new data point, is actually quite hard to construct. And then computing the entropy of this, it requires a number of uh, difficult approximations. So instead, what, uh, what we can note is that this is just the mutual information between x star and our, our point y, 
that, that, that we're, we're taking this expectation with respect to. So what we can actually do is just flip the order of this, since that is symmetric. And what we'll end up with is the entropy of y, just given my current set of data, and then the expected entropy, not uh, uh, of x star, but of y condition on x star. And we call this predictive entropy search because now all we're dealing with is predictive distributions of, of y. This component right here is easy to take care of because of the Gaussian process assumption I made. So this is just a Gaussian. Um, then this component, uh, what I'll see is that I, I need to do two steps here. So here I've just repeated this, but now I've, I've replaced the expectation with a Monte Carlo average. Um, where what I'm doing is just sampling x stars. So the first thing I have to do is I have to sample x star. Um, then given a sample x star, um, I can move on to this next step. Well, this quantity right here, this is just replacing this entropy with the entropy of a, a Gaussian. So this is just the marginal variance of my Gaussian process evaluated at the input point that I'm evaluating x. So then, if I am somehow able to approximate this distribution of y given x star with a Gaussian, I can replace this entropy with, again, the same sort of quantity summed over my Monte Carlo average here. So this has two steps. What I need to do is, again, sample x star and then approximate this distribution right here, y condition on x star, with a Gaussian. And from there, I can compute quite easily, you see, the uh, predictive entropy search acquisition function. So first off, how do I sample the, the optimizer's x star? The optimizer's x star, what we're going to do, what we're going to do and, and I'm going over this uh, uh, at, at a very high level, so I'm skipping many of the details here. Um, what we're going to do is instead we're, we're sample the function f. So if we're able to sample the function f, we can then maximize that sampled function, and that will give us a sample from the posterior of x star. So here's an example of that, where I've sampled these gray functions here, taken their maximums, and, or the, the maximum of these, and, and over these many different functions, and that gives me these samples. And so in this illustration, we've shown just a histogram for this 1D problem here of the distribution of x star. Now, one thing we could do is just sample these functions. However, this is an infinite dimensional object because this is just a function here. So what I could sort of consider is building this up incrementally. And so my optimizer could take sort of a lazily evaluated function, and then it could evaluate a data point while optimization is going forward, and then add that back to my data set and crank through the Gaussian process uh, uh, um, equations to get the, the updated posterior. However, that can be quite expensive if we have to optimize this function very deeply. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is replace our Gaussian process with a, a sampled feature-based representation, where these features are sampled in the same way uh, using this same approach as, as Rahimi and Recht the um, also known as the sort of random kitchen sinks approach. Um, this also corresponds essentially to a sort of continuous form of Thompson sampling. If, if you're more aware of sort of the uh, uh, bandits literature, and this was also used in some other work we did in order to um, uh, actually implement Thompson sampling for these continuous sorts of problems. So next, given a sample of x star, we need to approximate this entropy. The, or we, in order to approximate the entropy, actually, we need to compute a Gaussian approximation to the distribution of f of x given x star. And then given f of x, we can easily get the distribution of y. So really what we need to do is condition on the fact that x star is a global maximizer. Well, essentially what we've done here is we've approximated the fact that x star is a global maximizer by saying that f of x star is a local maximizer and then added some additional constraints to say that f of x star should be greater than all previous observations we've made and then that it should be greater than the point that we're currently evaluating. 
So we've already sort of made an approximation here, and we're going to approximate that further. The, the first thing we're going to do is we construct this distribution over f of x star given these first two constraints, which we see these first two constraints have nothing to do with the next point we're going to evaluate. Um, there's also some additional latent variables here that, that are, are sort of unimportant because we're going to marginalize them out. So what we can do is construct a Gaussian uh, approximation to this distribution, um, where essentially we can do that using gradient observations, which can be done in closed form, and EP uh, to basically handle the fact that uh, since this is a, we want to make sure that this uh, is held, and also the fact that uh, f of x star is a local maximizer, that requires some inequality constraints basically on the Hessian. Um, so we can, uh, we can perform uh, that approximation using EP, which I won't go into detail because I'd definitely run over time if I were to do that. Um, but then, given that Gaussian approximation, we can, for any x, construct a new Gaussian approximation for the joint distribution of f of x and f of x star. We can do that in closed form, given this first approximation. And then, with one more moment matching step, we can include this last uh, uh, constraint and approximate that with a Gaussian. Now, this gives us the v that we needed for the conditional distribution of f of x given x star. So we can plug that into the earlier equation I gave and directly evaluate the, uh, the predictive entropy search acquisition. So, OK, we, we've shown a number of different approximations to, uh, uh, to this um, acquisition function. But now the question is, does that actually help us? Well, in the middle here, I've shown uh, for a particular uh, set of data points the uh, entropy search objective. So essentially using the mutual information in the other direction. Um, and here, what I've shown is using a, a number of a, a, a very intensive sort of Monte Carlo approximation to this uh, that we're going to use as ground truth. So this is essentially ground truth. This is entropy search, and this is our predictive entropy search uh, objective function. And what we see is that this gives a much better approximation to this than does the original entropy search uh, uh, approximation. Now, that's all well and good that we get a better approximation to the, uh, uh, to the acquisition function, but does that actually help us in practice um, in optimizing functions? So what we've shown here is uh, samples of, of functions that are unknown to us, to our optimizer, that come from a Gaussian process prior. And here we're comparing our approach, predictive entropy search, the earlier entropy search uh, approach, and another method, expected improvement. And we see that predictive entropy search does significantly better than either of these two methods. So this new approximation does actually help us in performing optimization. Now, this was sort of a synthetic example, but we've also done, and, and this is small for a reason, since I don't have uh, enough time to go over all of these uh, different plots here. But we've, we've shown examples of this working on a number of, of different realistic problems. So, for example, the earlier uh, uh, example I gave where you were optimizing a neural network, we, that's this example here. Um, we've also shown it on a number of, of samples from the, uh, from the global optimization community and uh, a number of other realistic examples. So the, the key point that, that I should make is that we always perform as well as, uh, as entropy search and or better than entropy search. And as well, we perform better than expected improvement in many of this, these different problems. Now, finally, one last thing I wanted to go over. Um, and I was hoping to show an, uh, a, a demo of this, but uh, since I had to use another machine, I didn't want to try and do that on the fly. Um, so 
what I have here is um, in, in the cartoon example of Bayesian optimization that I showed earlier, there's actually a number of places where you can make different choices. For example, for the actual model that one uses for uh, uh, Bayesian optimization, for the way that the initial points are sampled, for the way that the uh, recommendations, the final recommendation to the user is given back. So there's a number of different ways that, that these can be set up. And what one can do is, what this suggests at least, is sort of a modular approach to Bayesian optimization. Um, so we've, we've sort of broken this apart into a number of, of different uh, components that you can plug one into the other. And we've sort of written about this. But also, um, you can go to, to GitHub and actually download all of this code right here and run uh, uh, all, sort of all of these sorts of examples that I showed today with our acquisition function, different acquisition functions, different recommendation methods. And I believe in about three lines of code, you can get uh, all of this working and sort of start playing with your own Bayesian optimization methods. Okay. And that's it. Thank you. Great. We have time for questions. Yeah, I have one. <clears throat> so yeah. in many practical applications, it may be the case that you have a population of optimization problems. Um, but because the acquisition strategy influences how you sample your functions, could you still use that to learn from the sample of popu from that population to basically improve fu um, your performance on future optimization problems? Oh, so, so basically uh, sharing between uh, different optimization problems. Yeah, you can definitely do that. And, and that would, uh, I mean, in, in some sense, that sort of informs your, your prior model that you, you, you start, uh, that you start this task off with. Um, and, uh, and, and essentially, um, yes, not myself, but uh, Eric Brochu has done that in some of his earlier work. Yeah. Okay, any more questions? No, let's okay. thank Matt again. Thank you.